What's up, Mike? This is Guys. Welcome back to the channel. Today is our Home Network Tour 2023. Everything that we show you inside this enclosure and outside this enclosure will be listed in the description below. And guys, if you don't know this, my name is Mike. I love technology. I love networking. I love computer builds. I love TVs, gaming consoles, all things technology. If you enjoy these things as well, make sure to hit subscribe and the bell notifications. And while you're there, give a thumbs up and share this video. And guys, consider joining our Patreon page where $2 a month helps keep this channel going. And the perks that you enjoy for $2 a month is a personal thank you in every new video. Also included is one tech support question per month. And the last perk is you're automatically enrolled into any giveaways that we have. And we do giveaways every five or six months. Let's get started. So first, we're going to start with the fiber cable that goes into our network panel. This fiber cable originates from this box under our sidewalk. And then from under the ground, this cable runs to the side of our garage into this box. Then up the wall through the attic and into our network panel. And this fiber cable connects to our ONT. From the ONT, we have a Cat6 cable that runs out of our network panel into our game room which is connected to the ASUS AXE7800 Wi-Fi 6E wireless router. We have a Cat6 cable connected to the LAN port on that router that runs back into the network panel. And this Cat6 cable is connected to our 10 port gigabit switch. This switch has eight port PoE plus with an additional two SFP slots. And this TP-Link switch is fully manageable. We also have an additional switch this is a Ruckus ICX switch, and we have a Cat6 cable that connects our TP-Link switch to the Ruckus ICX switch. And all the cables that you see are either Cat6 riser cable or Cat6A. We do not have any Cat5E. To the left, you can see the Ring Elite power injector that provides PoE power to our Ring Elite doorbell. And to the right, we have an additional power strip because this enclosure only contains four power outlets. And that is not enough, <laughs> not even close. Uh. And this is our Raspberry Pi 4 DNS Pi Hole server. And yes, I know a Raspberry Pi 4 is definitely overkill for a Pi Hole server. And because of that annoying Raspberry Pi shortage, this is all I could get. And to power these cool RGB lights, we simply connected it to the USB port on the Pi Hole. Pretty cool. At the top of the enclosure, we have a Lutron Smart Bridge Pro, which allows for total management of our Lutron Smart Lights. And this is the Samsung Smart Things Hub, which basically does the same thing. And just a heads up, I didn't buy this, it came with my house. And this is our Kivo Plus, which allows us to lock and unlock the front door remotely. And lastly, we have our NVR system for our security cameras. We have a monitor and a two terabyte system. And we can even watch these cameras from our big screen TV. We simply used HDMI over ethernet. Now going outside of the network panel, we have a backup power supply and heading into our living room, we have two WAPs installed in the ceiling. This access point is the Netgear WAX630 Wi-Fi 6 AP. This access point connects to our Ruckus ICX switch and is powered by PoE power over ethernet. Our second access point is the ingenious ECW336 Wi-Fi 6E access point which is connected to our TP-Link 8-port switch and is powered by PoE+. And every room in our house, at a minimum, contains two Cat6 ports. Every room in our house contains smart lights and smart thermostats. We have the Echo B+. Outside the house, we have six Reolink security cameras, as well as the Ring Elite doorbell. And all of our outdoor lighting is automated and can be controlled with an app on your phone. So guys, that's it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and for God's sakes, hit the bell icon. And we'll see you in the next video real soon. Peace.